Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Sweet Art Crafts. In this video, I will be going over the resin supplies that I feel like every beginner resin artist should have when starting out. Um, these are just my personal recommendations, so you probably won't need everything that's in this video, so please keep that in mind that these are just the products that I wish that I knew when I was first starting out with resin. And I want to thank you guys so much for getting me to 50,000 subscribers. I really appreciate all the love and support, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The first thing that I recommend that all resin beginners have is a respiratory mask that uses vapor filters. This is the mask that I use which is by the 3M brand and the filters that I use are also by the 3M brand and they are vapor filters. And basically the reason why I suggest that every single resin beginner or resin artist use um, a respiratory mask that uses the vapor filters is because epoxy resin is a chemical and it can have side effects. like. Like I've seen some people get rashes or they get very bad headaches and to avoid all of that you want to make sure that you're wearing a mask a respiratory mask at all times I know I have had people ask me can I use a N95 mask or if I can use a surgical mask and the answer is no the reason why is because a um, respiratory mask that uses the filters that I have filter out the vapors that um, vapor fumes that come out of epoxy resin and regular masks do not do that so that is why you have to have a respiratory mask when you're working with epoxy resin. The next product that I recommend is nitrile gloves. The reason why I recommend wearing gloves when working with resin is because since it is a chemical, it can cause rashes if it were to get onto your hands. So you want to make sure that your hands are protected at all times. I've seen way too many TikTok videos and like Instagram videos of people not wearing gloves and I cringe because this stuff can really affect you guys So that is why I recommend wearing natural gloves I know that it is a little bit harder to find these type of gloves right now So vinyl gloves are also another option, but they just won't protect your hands as much as nitro gloves can the next product that I recommend is isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol and the percentage that I personally like to use is 91% because it is stronger. I like to use rubbing alcohol to clean my molds, to clean down my working station and to also clean my charms in between sanding or for when I put baby oil into the pieces, there's a, the oil gets everywhere so I have to wipe them down and before doming and everything like that. And I also like to use this for when I use alcohol inks because with 91% you're able to move around the alcohol inks better than say 70%. I've noticed it doesn't really work as well, but if you're unable to find the 91%, you can also use the 70%. The next thing that I recommend is finding a good epoxy resin, which can take some time when you're first starting out. When I first was starting off with resin, I did get recommended the brand Art and & Glow, and I do really love this resin still, and I use it for certain projects. Art & Glow is a one-to-one -one ratio resin, so you do 15 milliliters of the resin and 15 milliliters of the hardener, and you mix those two together for about five to eight minutes, and then your resin is ready to be used. The resins that I mainly use for my charms are two-to-one ratio resins, so basically, for example, you would use 30 milliliters of the resin and 15 milliliters of the hardener and mix those two together to get your resin. One of the brands that I use is Liquid Diamonds and I mainly use this resin for my very like layer that I need to be super duper clear. That's what I mainly use this for. I don't really think this resin holds mica pigments or paints or anything like that very well just because of how low in viscosity it is. Everything kind of just drops to the bottom. So I mainly only use this for just a very clear layer. 
next brand that I use is the clear cast 7050 and I really like using this resin for most of my charms because of the way that it holds paints and mica pigments and resin dyes and it cures really fast like within maybe 12 hours the pieces are fully cured so I really love using that resin for most of my projects and it's a really really good resin but it just has a little bit of bubbles here and there so that's why I don't use it for my clear layer as much as for as like my liquid diamonds resin so I have their purpose for each of these now when it comes to doming, the resin that I use is by the brand Faux Rizzle and it's the Nova resin, I think that's how you say it. And this is a 1 to 1 ratio resin and I feel like this is the best resin that I've used for doming because it cures really hard compared to any other resin that I've tried for doming and I really love using this for shaker charms because I really only need one layer of doming compared to when I used to use other brands I would need at least two layers for it to at least feel like it was secured so when if a customer were to drop their charm it wouldn't like burst or anything like that and that is why I really love using this resin the only issue I have with it is that it does have a lot of bubbles so you have to make sure you mix very very slow with this resin to avoid any bubbles I also forgot to mention another reason why I like to use 2 to 1 ratio resins as my main resin for my charms and trays is because I noticed that they seem to have a bit of a more harder cure compared to the 1 to 1 ratio resins that I have used. The only downside is I wish I can use them for doming but since they are such a low viscosity in the for the resins that they kind of just run off the piece when you pour them for doming so that's why I just prefer to use a 1 to 1 ratio resin since they are a little bit higher in viscosity so they hold onto the piece better when you're pouring onto them for doming. The next supplies you're going to need are mixing utensils and mixing cups. I personally prefer to use plastic cups and utensils because they are a little bit easier for me to clean but you guys can also use silicone ones as well. I just don't like to use the silicones anymore just because for me they were a little bit harder to clean. The first cup that I'm showing you guys is the number 5 cup and this is just a regular condiment cup that I found at Party City but I really like to use these cups for when um, I need to separate out different colors so once I've mixed my resin I'll pour in them it into multiple cups of these and then I'll mix up my separate colors and these are the cups that I use to mix my resin in and you guys can see the measurements are on these cups so I use the smaller cup for when I'm doing a smaller batch of resin and then I use the bigger cups for when I do a bigger batch and they're all number five cups and the reason why I keep mentioning that they are number 5 cups is because typically with the number 5 ones, ones, if you end up leaving resin into them, you can kind of crackle or crack the cup and the resin will just pop out of them. And that is how I'm able to easily reuse the cups even if I leave resin in them. And typically to mix my resin, I like to use plastic knives from when I got takeout. I usually never use the knives when um, I'm getting the food and usually they would just go to waste so I just collect them now and use them for resin and I have no issues with them they're actually just very perfect and these are some old ones that I have and then I have this new one that I'll use once those ones get to the point where I can't use them anymore and it's just another way so that you can recycle products and not have to throw them away and plus they're free When you're first starting off with resin, you don't have to spend a lot of money on molds from like mold makers like me. Since we make them by hand, they are going to be more expensive. When I first started off with resin, I mainly bought my molds from AliExpress, Etsy, Amazon, Michaels, Joann's, and eBay. And there's a few other craft stores that you can get um, molds like these from. Just because when you're starting off with resin, you don't want to spend too much money on molds that maybe you might not like after a while or you don't know if you're going to be sticking with resin for long so that is why I always recommend starting off with some cheaper molds see how you like working with resin before investing into more expensive molds 
from handmade mold makers like me and the only downside with the cheaper molds is that you might not have a big variety of different designs especially for shaker charms and typically with mold makers like me we're able to get out more designs compared to from other um, places just because they just have a set designs that they have and I'm able to come out with molds different designs every single week and I'm just showing you guys some of the molds that I sell and I make on my website and you can see how thin the other mold that I just showed you is and how thick my molds are compared to that. The next thing that I recommend is acrylic paints because you can use these in your resin to add color or you can use them to paint on the outside of your charms or trinket trays and the brand that I really like to use is Apple Barrel just because it is very cheap. I think it's 50 cents at Walmart and I really like the consistency of it. It is a little bit runny but when it's mixed into resin it's one of the better paints that I've used because it doesn't make all these weird little flex inside of the resin when it's cured so I really love using this brand of acrylic paint. Resin dyes and there's two different type of resin dyes that I use and the first one that I use is not really opaque so basically it gives this kind of like gummy bear see-through effect that I really love doing with my charms like this one for example so that is why I really like using resin dyes because compared to with paints I can't really get this effect so that's why I use them and typically you can get a whole bunch of colors for maybe 19 to 25 dollars on amazon you can even find these on aliexpress too so you get a lot of colors for the price and they last a while just because you'd only need maybe a couple of drops of these the next type of resin dye that i recommend is opaque resin dyes and i use the ones from casting craft in the colors white and black they do have a few other colors but these are the only two that i use and to get really white pieces i really love using the white one and to also make my paints a bit more pastel or opaque and then i use the black one just to get my pieces very black because whenever i've tried to use acrylic paints to get a really nice white color or black color they are not as opaque as these are so this is why I really recommend these since you'll get the perfect white and the perfect black Another way that you can color your resin is with mica pigments and I really love using these for pieces that I really want a nice beautiful opaque um, glittery effect to them. So this is why I recommend all these different options for coloring your resin because depending on the piece you might want a different effect and you can't really get a the mica pigment effect with paints or resin dyes so that's why I also recommend having these as well. And they are actually relatively cheap for like small packets like these. I think I paid one dollar for each of the colors and you can find so many colors on Etsy and even Amazon sells packets of them I would mainly get them from Etsy or like Amazon or even Aliexpress because they are typically cheaper and you can get a wide variety of colors the next thing that I recommend is glitter and the reason why I say glitter is because you can really make a piece look even prettier with glitter and I notice with a lot of my pieces I always use glitter with them and I get my glitter from either Lunar Luster Creations or Walmart, Amazon, Joann's, Michael's, um, AliExpress, eBay. You can get glitter from just about anywhere and these are my favorite glitters right here and you don't really have to start off with the amount of glitter that I have. I have like a whole bunch of glitter and you really don't need that much if you're starting off I would really recommend that opal color that I showed in the beginning and you can get that from a lot of different places they have that that kind of mixture look just because with the opal one you can use that type of color with just about any color resin that you're using When you're starting off with the resin, you might not have the funds to afford a Cricut machine or a laminator to make your own custom design stickers. And that is why I recommend just buying stickers from a craft store. And these are some letter ones that I got at Michaels. And you can easily make custom charms from these stickers. And I mainly get my stickers from, like I said, Michaels, Joann's, Amazon, Etsy. And you can even commission someone 
from Instagram or even Etsy to make custom stickers for you with the foils and everything like that just because you don't want to be spending too much money on machines that you might not even use so that is why I recommend just buying stickers from the store and I'm going to be showing you guys all the stickers that I saw at Joann's they have a whole bunch of these and you can really make a lot of different design charms and stuff like that without having to have a Cricut or a laminator The next thing I recommend is an electric hand drill and the reason why I recommend an electric one compared to those cheaper um, manual ones is because you're going to save yourself so much time in the long run when you're drilling your holes for your keychains or even when you're sanding your pieces. When I first started off I used the manual ones and I'm telling you I wish I just went ahead and bought an electric one just because I wasted so much time trying to drill the holes and I used to get a lot of my palm of my hand would hurt so much that I would get blisters sometimes it was just ridiculous and that is why I just recommend just go ahead and just buy and invest into an electric one and even on Amazon you can get them for pretty cheap for like $18 the one that I'm using now I think I bought it for $40 at Aldi a few years back so there are cheaper versions that you can get even at a local um, Home Depot and stuff like that I've seen some for $10 The next thing I recommend are jewelry pliers and you're going to be needing these to open up jump rings to attach your keychains and to close them as well and I got my pliers from Walmart and they were $5 each and they're just the basic kind of pliers. Um, I don't really do anything too fancy with my charms like adding beads or bows or anything like that so I don't really need the fancier pliers to do anything that like that with so when you're starting off you can just easily just use these ones to make the simpler charms until you progress and want to make more um prettier ones with all those extra stuff next thing i recommend if you plan on making keychain resin crafts are keychain findings and i typically buy mine from amazon because they come in bulk but you can also get them from Etsy or even AliExpress. My favorite like attachment to use is this claw one instead of a split ring just because I feel like they're a little bit easier to attach onto keys or backpacks and stuff like that. And then the next thing that I get a lot of questions about is this bale that I attach to my some of my charms. Depending on the piece I use these but they all I do is attach the jump ring to them and then I attach the claw part or the split ring and then it's good to go. But for certain pieces I do need to use an eye screw just because especially for clear pieces just because it kind of looks weird just having the bale there and it kind of just blocks the piece in the back if it's clear. That is why I use the ice screw too. And here are some split rings. I don't use these as much just because, like I said earlier, it's just easier for to use the claw attachment. And then here are the jump rings that I attach. And um, I usually use a heavy gauge just because they are a little bit sturdier than a thinner one. And there's a whole bunch of different designs that I've seen for these claw attachments and the split rings. You really don't have to just get the circle ones or the basic claw. I've seen a heart shape. I've seen moon shaped ones. And like this one has a kind of a crinkled kind of effect. I don't know how to describe it. But there's a lot of different shapes that you guys can get for these to really make your pieces like stand out more or look even prettier. But I just typically like to use the basic ones. The next thing I recommend is a silicone mat and I mainly use these for doming but I also like to put my molds on them to pour resin onto just because sometimes I can get resin on my table and I have ruined at least two tables by not doing this so that is why I recommend always using a silicone mat especially for doming and I'm just showing you guys how I lay my piece down when I'm doming and then the reason why I also use the um, gridded kind of silicone mat is because they capture the resin when if there is any overspill and when I've used the the flat ones I noticed that the overspill will get everywhere so you'd have to really sand down the pieces and with this you can easily take pliers to remove the little gridded parts the rest of the supplies that I will be mentioning are mainly dedicated to shaker resin crafts so if you don't plan on making anything like that then you don't really need these supplies 
The first product that I'm going to recommend is the 1 16th inch hole puncher. If you guys have been following me for a while now, you guys know that I adapted the way that Amy Maid makes her resin um, shaker charms, which is by punching a 1 16th inch hole into the transparency film and then filling um, the baby oil through that hole. I personally prefer doing this way now just because it makes my charms look a little bit more professional with by not having the hole at the side but if you don't want to do this way you can just use an electric hand drill and make a hole with it at the side of the piece to attach the transparency film to the charm you're going to need uv resin i get a lot of questions asking can i just use epoxy resin to attach the transparency film and i would say no just because with epoxy resin you're going to have to wait at least 12 to 24 hours and the transparency film is going to slip and slide and any excess epoxy resin is just going to get into the piece and you do not want to have that happen because the the shaker fillings won't move around as much and it's just easier to use the uv resin because you can use the uv lamp to just um, cure it within two to five minutes so that is why i recommend you use the uv resin and if you want to use a different type of glue i haven't tried them but from my understanding they won't have as strong of a hold as compared to uv resin To cure UV resin, you're going to either need a UV lamp or a UV torch or flashlight. I personally use a flashlight just because it is a little bit stronger than a UV lamp so it doesn't take as long to cure. Um, it typically takes me 2-5 to five minutes to cure my pieces but with some UV resins it can't even take up to 10 minutes. All I do is take off this little plastic part that used to be there so that I can lay the flashlight on top of my pieces without it sticking to the charms. I get a lot of questions if you can use a UV lamp or flashlight in order to speed up the cure of epoxy resin and the answer is no because UV resin is specifically formulated to be used with UV light in order to cure it while epoxy resin is a two part chemical that has a part A and a part B that you mix together and what you uses to cure it is the time that it takes for the chemical to fully harden together and that's why you can't use a, um, a UV lamp to cure it or speed up the process because it just won't work. The next two products that I recommend are baby oil and a precision tip bottle. I personally like to use baby oil to fill in my shaker charms with because I love the way that the shaker fillings flow inside of the charms with baby oil and because it's also relatively cheap. I got this big bottle for maybe like $2.50 at Walmart and it does last a while because you don't need that much baby oil in your shaker charms. And also, I know there's other concoctions like you can use distill water or like glycerin mixtures. It's just so much easier just to use the baby oil compared to that because if you use regular water in your pieces, you risk the chance of the products that you put in them um, molding and um, turning colors. So that's why I just use the baby oil because I've never had an issue with any of that. And to fill my pieces, I use a precision tip bottle that I put the baby oil through. I just prefer using a precision tip bottle just because it's a little bit easier than using a needle and you can get a lot of the baby oil into the piece relatively fast. The next product that I recommend is polymer clay and the reason why I like to use polymer clay is because you can make your own shaker fillings with it and the piece that I'm about to show I made the pocky sticks as well as the sprinkles in it. I didn't make the um, strawberry pieces in it but you can make those because there's a lot of tutorials that show you how to make it. I was just really lazy so that's why I just bought them. And the reason why I like to use um, polymer clay as well is because it is actually pretty cost effective when you make your own pieces and you can make so many different designs and there's so many tutorials that can show you how to make different stuff. And in this piece I made the little um, bones as well as the little balls that are in there. And you can make so many different colors that you might not find in stuff that you look on AliExpress that are made on from clay. And the possibilities are endless with using polymer clay. And I personally like to use this brand that I'm showing you. I don't know how to say it properly so I'm not even going to try compared to Fimo clay because I feel like the Fimo clay is a little too hard and this one's softer. I've never had any success with the Fimo clay so I just stick with this brand. 
The next thing that I recommend are beads and the beads that I'm going to show you right now are beads that I sell on my website. I sell these heart and star shapes and I have a whole bunch of different colors. You don't necessarily have to use these beads but these are my favorite beads to put into my pieces. The next kind of beads that you can use are seed beads as shaker fillings and I really like these because of the variety of colors that they have in these and when they're on sale they're relatively cheap. The other beads that I like to use as well are these ones that are called micro beads if I'm not mistaken or they're just beads with no holes in them and I just really love how they look in your pieces but I've been making my own like I showed with the, the polymer clay so I don't really buy these as much anymore but you can purchase them if you don't really want to use clay and um, there's different colors that you can get but there's not as many colors that I've been able to find but that's why I stick with the clay but the other beads that I'm going to show you are these pearl beads that are in like a heart star moon and like a circle shape they have some other shapes as well The last product that I'm going to recommend is transparency film and this is what I use for my shaker charms to lock in the shaker fillings after I traced um, the pieces with it and then I use the UV resin and the UV light to glue it onto the pieces before doming and I you can also use acetate as well but I think it's a little bit more expensive so that's why I just use transparency film because you can get a whole pack of this for like $20-30 on Amazon and it lasts you a very long time. I haven't even gotten through half of the sheets of these. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Like I said at the beginning of the video, these are just my personal recommendations of products that I use now that I wish I knew when I was first starting off with resin. And you don't have to get everything that's in the video, but these are just what I think you should get. And um, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with your friends and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye now.